Hello and welcome to Bean and Bracket Factory, or welcome back if you've come back, and welcome to episode two of the brake pedal project. Now, in episode one, I described uh, or explained why I needed to make a new brake pedal, and I started making some of the bits and I made a little bracket. So, in this episode, I'm going to get cracking and pretty much make the rest of the assembly, which is the master cylinder bracket, the brake pedal itself, other bits and bobs. Uh, so uh, sit back and enjoy. Let's get cracking. So back on the case and I'm going to make that out of metal. Uh, that's the master cylinder bracket. Now I need to think about how I'm going to make it and what I'm going to make it out of. Uh, it's going to be made out of steel and it needs to be very strong. If you think about how much force you can apply to that pedal, it's going to be easily 100 kilos worth of force your entire body weight plus some uh, when you're under heavy braking or panicking multiply that by three or four you could be looking at 400 kilos worth of force going through this so you can see how in cardboard it, it would bend there uh, these would start to bow out so it needs to be pretty beefy so i'm going to make that out of three mil steel and because three mil is quite hard to bend, I'm going to do the sort of score and bend uh, and weld on these corners. I'm going to make it out of one sheet folded round, one piece. Uh, but I'm also going to put um, a strut which goes from there to there, which is going to tie these two parts together. And under extreme load uh, will be in tension which is way stronger than in compression. So in tension, I'm gonna have probably a four mil strut which connects those points. So that'll be absolutely bomb proof by the time I've finished it. Um, so uh, next thing then is to, is to get cracking with that thing. So the bracket's now made and uh, it welded up all right and it's it's reassuringly heavy. It's a good old solid thing. Um, obviously it's going to have the, the forward link which is going to make it indestructible hopefully. Uh, so that's turned out all right uh, so far. Obviously I've got the mounting holes in the base. So now it's time to stick it on the car. And here it is slapped on the car. So. Obviously, if I press that now, um, it basically works. Um, so you can see that the threaded rod dips down slightly at full throw, but when it gets to there, it's horizontal and it dips down again there. So that's that's pretty good. That's fine. Uh, so now, obviously, the tension needs to be turned to the actual um, brake pedal arm itself probably going to sort of Frankenstein this up a bit and maybe tack some bits and bobs on and work out how it's going to be and then probably remake it I don't know we'll see I'm sure it'll all unfold it'll all come out in the wash so crack on so I've been working on the brake lever so this is the evolution this is how it's gone that was the first prototype that was the second one and I changed the dimensions and based upon that I made this one out of steel so what I've done to kind of make it evolve I welded this chunk on the bottom and the reason I wanted to do that was so that the foot kind of rocked on it as it pressed so you don't want your toe hitting that bit hence this bit sticks out so on the strength of that I, I didn't want to leave it as that that one on the strength of that I made this pattern and on this pattern I've made it a little bit wider because the strength in a effectively it's a girder the strength in the girder is in its depth and then if you've got it deeper you can stick some holes in the middle and then that has evolved into that so this is my final 
iteration of the brake lever and I've put it in the in the car and peel that off a bit of masking tape put it in the car and my foot rocks over quite nicely so quite happy with that it needs a little bit more fettling good word fettling a bit bit more filing a bit more finishing it's not bad um, another another half an hour of fettling and then what I'm going to do where is it I've got this bit of th it's actually three inch tube and um, I'm going to cut a chunk out of that that is going to be my little foot pad it's going to be about inch and a half about that sort of size about about that sort of wide and the idea is that as my foot um, presses it it kind of rolls around this this sort of radius piece here so I've got to do that I've got to cut that off uh, and weld it on and I've got to uh, w turn a little boss and weld a boss on there so that it's um, about well the overall it's going, going to be about two centimeters thick three quarters of an inch or so thick wide um, I didn't show you making that because quite frankly it's a bit boring all I'm doing is cutting drilling and filing um, this is a bit more interesting I'll cut that and weld that on and I'll, and I'll turn that and weld that on so need to finish this that's the next thing so I cut this bit out and it will go on there like that and it's sort of I quite like that it's a it's the right sort of shape and size and fully enough it's the same size as the previous one I made but 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 I can't help thinking it's a bit spindly it's only 1.5 mil thick I want it a bit given that I've made this bomb proof I want to make that bomb proof as well so I'm going to actually make it out of 3 mil plate now um, 3 mil plate this is a length of 3 mil plate just here actually quite hard to bend I've got some rollers but I think I'm going to struggle to bend that in rollers because it's flipping flipping hard so uh, I'm going to basically stick it in the vise and basically heat the thing up cherry red and bend it it'll bend like a banana uh, bend like chocolate when it's that hot so I've got to try and estimate approximately that radius it doesn't have to be exactly that radius roughly that radius which is about a one and a half inch radius so time to, to, to bust out the oxyacetylene and um, try not to set the garage on fire Right, metal bent. So without touching it and branding myself, I can just offer up that. Ooh, that is about right. Slightly tighter, but, but that doesn't matter. In fact, I could just try and bend it out a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Actually, it's not tighter. It's not as tight. Go back again. That's fine. That's good. Right, let it cool down. Ah, that's quite hot now. Let it cool down. Cut it, fettle it, file it, weld it. Bit more fettling later and old spindly one, new chunky one. So I've curved that slightly and I just need to weld that 
Add that on there now. So let's go and weld that on. So it's welded up, you saw that, um, quite happy with that, that looks alright doesn't it, uh, it's nice and solid now and the only thing left to do now is to make um, a boss, I'm going to weld on the side of there to give it a wider pivot point and the reason you can hear the, the lathe are humming over there, it's the fan, is because I've made this. I turned up this boss and I'm now going to weld that on the side of there. You don't really need to see that because once you've seen one bit of TIG welding you've seen them all. I'm going to weld that on now and then I'm going to try it on the car. So the boss is now welded on and um, quite happy with that. I actually did that after a couple of glasses of wine so I think the moral of the story is drink more wine. So let's stick it on the car. And here it is, it's on the car. There was a slight comedy moment and I came to put the paddle on and of course it wouldn't go through the slot because I welded a bottom on the side so I had to cut a little slot out of there which is fine. Uh, delayed me by about five minutes so it's now on and obviously press the pedal works quite nicely so the final link in the chain and is a link is to connect that tie that to that so that um, it opposes the um, opposing it opposes the opposing force yeah it basically ties the two together uh, and I'm going to make a little bracket that goes across there out of some chunky steel and have a diagonal link welded which goes down and picks up this pivot point here so that's the final step so there it is the bracket um, as you can see I decided that I would go more direct not quite in parallel with that but I'll go more direct to the bottom fixing and not the top fixing um, and I'm quite happy with that it's a nice sturdy thing three mil thick and at the risk of repeating myself if I'm pushing against that uh, this is opposing that push so I think without that bracket I'll probably see some flex in the base base plate I don't know that for a fact but I'm, my gut feel is that I would so that's opposing that and it's kind of taking the base plate out of the equation to be honest so that's all good so what next um, what next is that I have to paint all of these pieces because they're bare steel and you can already see that this they're starting to go rusty um, because obviously I welded that so it vaporized any oil so it's now going rusty so this one needs to be painted going to be in gloss black to go with all these other parts I've got to hook up the the brake line so it's going to come out of here somewhere and it's going to be a flexible hose which I need to make and I need to hook it into the rest of the the system probably make up some new brake lines using a brake line making machine um, I've got to reinstate the throttle uh, linkage which doesn't quite fit there anymore so that's going to have to be moved or modified or something there was a water header tank just there uh, that needs to be relocated well probably I need to fabricate a new one I think so there's a fair few things still to crack on with um, but as, for, as far as this episode is concerned that's it for now if you want to see any of that stuff um, I don't think I've ever done any painting before um, I'll tell you what my favorite paints are which gives you a nice smooth black finish 
Um, anyway, if you want to see any of that, um, hit subscribe. And if you like this, hit like. Please feel free to leave a comment, ask any questions, criticisms, all welcome. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.